the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to Glory you, to you Lord, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teachings, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this, a new teaching with authority? He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once, his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, you. to you, Lord Christ. Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Jesus brings a new kind of authority, a new kind of teaching. And this authority that Jesus brings ushers into the world something that astounds and amazes the gospel of Mark proclaims. Authority, authority is one of those words that makes some bristle these days. It is an American characteristic to resist some levels of authority, especially as it pushes against the idea of individual liberty. And for some, this resistance to authority has gone so far as rejecting authorities those accepted and proven sources of information, instruction, and intelligence from doctors, scientists, and other learned experts in the field. And no matter where we stand on this spectrum, we all rely on some kind of authority to guide our actions and choices, whether we see it as authority over us or not. Besides the snow behind us, you might see some citrus trees behind me. I thought I was an authority on these trees because I had grown them in my backyard in Texas. But what you don't see in this picture is all the dead leaves that have fallen on the ground alongside the pots. Just because I knew a little bit about orange and grapefruit trees from having grown them in my backyard in Texas did not mean that I was an authority on citrus grown in pots inside in Virginia with heat and little sun. So um, I had to turn to the experts. I had to turn to some authorities on this subject of growing grapefruit and orange trees inside. And I am now hoping with their guidance that there will be some healing to these trees, that it will begin when I'm not relying on my authority alone. Authority, for authority on matters of God, we Episcopalians look to tradition, scripture, and reason in that threefold source of authority. And these three sources interpreted together is how we understand God. Unlike other religious tr traditions who emphasize one or more of these sources, we Episcopalians seek to balance them together in that proverbial three-legged stool. Without sources of authority, people have and could say that God is whatever they want God to be. Authority has a way of grounding our understanding of God. So we don't ourselves become demigods, 
trying to make God to be what we want God to be based on our own individual desires, standards, or sense of authority. In scripture, God warns against the perils of relying on a lack of authority. God calls those without authority false prophets, those who presume to speak in the name of God when God has not commanded them to speak for God. And as God tells Moses, as reported in that book of Deuteronomy that Steve read for us, the penalty is harsh for those false prophets. Like the fallen leaves from my tree, their future is fatal. Now the authority of Jesus. The authority of Jesus is revealed by Mark in this surprising story from the synagogue by the Sea of Galilee in that fishing village called Capernaum. Jesus walks into this place of worship, into this town, and he immediately starts teaching as one having authority, not like the other teachers. Thinking about that moment of teaching, I got kind of that thrill that you feel in the room, feel in a room. I remember professors, teachers, preachers that were like that. Listening to them with longing, knowing that he was saying more that I could mentally grasp or furiously understand by taking notes. There was something going on in a room when someone is teaching with that kind of authority. It's a silence, kind of a thrill that sits there. And into this moment, as Mark describes it, something wild and unexpected happens with Jesus into that teaching moment, into that lecture hall of a synagogue burst a man who shouts out to Jesus, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. These shouts jolt the silence of the crowd one night I was jolted by shouts during a lecture at the Richmond Forum when a group of people were protesting the message of the speaker. The crowd was unsettled by the disturbances of our peace. And yet I think that was the point. The shouts were there to catch our attention. Like in the gospel, Mark is trying to get our attention in the words of these shouting man. This shouting man is said to have an unclean spirit. While people in the first century understood physical illness as a spiritual disorder, this unclean spirit of this man speaks to something much more. Here in Mark, this unclean spirit is not about a disorder affecting one man. This unclean spirit represents a cosmic disorder, the affliction of the whole world. In this first chapter of Mark, Mark is telling this classic tale of the battle of the authority of good versus evil. It's a Harry Potter versus Voldemort, a Luke Skywalker versus Darth Vader. And in the world of modern psychology, that dark and shadow side that we keep at bay, like a Mr. Hyde versus Dr. Jekyll. And for healing to happen, for the power of authority to be revealed, these conflicting authorities must confront each other. And what is amazing and astounding about Jesus is at this moment of confrontation, when good and evil, shadow and light meet, there is no contest, no cosmic battle. Jesus, who previously was indifferent to the temptations of Satan in the wilderness, rebukes the evil, the darkness, commands its silence, and controls it with just a few words. A new authority has come into the everyday world, and his power is in his presence. His power is in his teaching, in his word. Here in the first chapter of Mark, the true nature of Jesus' authority is just beginning to be revealed. 
It is at the end of the story when it becomes so much clearer. It is at the end after Jesus' death when the women come to the empty tomb and they too are amazed. What is amazing about Jesus' authority is that it is a power born out of love. It is the authority of love that leads Jesus to free this man from the unclean spirit that haunts him. It is love that brings Jesus into the world to free it from the affliction that attacks it. And it is love that Jesus is teaching in word and deed of sacrifice and service. God is love. And where true love is, God himself is there. Love as authority is amazing and an astonishing idea. Authority for me was usually about following rules, doing the right thing is defined by my current system of family, school, culture, nation, and society. Yet experience and history tells that these systems have not always been right or loving to ourselves and to one another. We tend to get it wrong. And yet, like for the scribes and Pharisees that Jesus confronts so often, the desire to do the right thing, to have the right answer is generally well intended. The right thing is intended to lead to what is good, what is righteous. But here's the problem. Like for those scribes and Pharisees, this desire to adhere to the right thing can become an end in itself, or worse, like that notorious unclean spirit, the devil on our backs, it keeps us from looking toward the authority of love, which is the way of Jesus. To the authorities of Jesus' day, his authority of love was so threatening to their sense of authority that it was deserving of the greatest show of Roman authority, capital punishment. Today, it may seem naive, foolish, to look to love as authority, as fear, protectionism, and all sorts of false prophets and authorities vie for power, fight to be the governing authority in our lives. How can love be enough, we ask? How can we give and receive it for ourselves and one another? What is the price to pay, the proof, we wonder? This is the astonishing thing. This love has been given and is free for the taking. The authority of the love has been revealed in Jesus and it is the balm in Gilead that heals the wounds of division, destruction, and death that infect this hurting world. For now, I'm keeping these dead leaves piled up on the floor around my plot, plant that is struggling to survive. They remind me that I needed help, a true authority to take care of these small things, these little gifts from God's creation. I'm humbled in these small things. Let us see with greater clarity the gift of God's loving authority as we face the hurts and need for healing in those bigger things that are all around us, especially in these days. Amen.
and now go into the world in peace and into the snow in peace <laughs> and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good send off, Steve. <laughs>